Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this new tutorial, we are going to add the jump ability. So we'll be able to jump using the spacebar button. And we are going to add the double jump feature as well. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon. I appreciate that. And let's jump right into it. As you can see, this is what we left off from the previous video. We've added this player and we can move left and right using the arrow keys. But we can't jump. That's what we are going to implement in this video. But you notice that the player is moving a little bit slow. So I realized that we need to use the fixed update method. So here we have the player movement script and we've used the update method to move our player by changing the rigid body velocity. So it's recommended to use the fixed update method when we move the player using the physics and make sure to change the time to delta time to time to fix it delta time and that's going to make our game works better now let's save the script and let's test the game again so when i move now as you can see he's moving a little bit smoother we just need to change the speed so under the player movement script let's change it to 200 and let's test again so now the game looks better Let's go ahead and add the jump ability. But first of all, make sure to change the value. So it's not saved when we are playing. So if you don't know, we are using the new input system in this game. Basically, we've created this input actions. And it has all of the settings that we need to implement our inputs. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a jump action so that we can check if we have pressed a key like the spacebar button. And to do that, we go under the actions section and let's hit this plus icon to add a new action and let's call it a jump. Then we need to specify the binding. So the binding is the trigger for the action, like the space key. So select this no binding and let's go under properties and we have this path. We can search for the space bar or we could listen and hit the space bar key. And as you can see, it pops up from here. Let's go ahead and click it. Now we'll be able to use this jump action to check if we have pressed the space bar. In such case, we can make the player jumps. But first of all, make sure to select the jump action and we can change few properties. So I'm gonna leave the action type to button. So we use the button action type when we have an action with one click. So we just need to hit the space bar button to jump and we need to change the interactions. So as you can see here, it is set to press and release. So we only need to jump when we press the key. We don't need to jump when we press and release it. So make sure to select press only. Then save the asset. And that's going to save this player control script that we are using in the player movement script. So here we've created an instance of the player controls. We can use the jump action under the awake function. So the syntax is a little bit weird, but that's how it works. We use controls then dot land and we have the jump action that we have created then we use dot performed so whenever the jump action is performed by pressing the space bar we need to call some kind of jump function and we use plus equals then we have this ctx object that contains some information about the action for example here we've used the ctx object to check if we are moving to the right or the left then we add this arrow and here we write the lines of code that is going to be executed when this jump action is performed. You could use this syntax or we could create a separate function and call it over here. For example, let's go down here and create void jump. For now, let's make a debug.log using debug.log and let's write the message player jump. And then we need to call the function over here by writing the name. Now, whenever the jump action is performed, this jump function is going to be called and it's going to display this message. Let's save the script to check if it works. So if I hit the spacebar button, we have this message player jump. So it's working. Now we need to add the actual logic in order to jump. Basically, we are going to change the Y velocity of the rigid body component using player rigid body dot velocity equals new vector2 
we are going to leave the x velocity the same using play rigid body dot velocity dot x but for the y velocity we need to use a jump force so I'm gonna create a variable up here using public float and let's call it a jump force I'm gonna give it a default value 5 now if we save the script we will be able to jump by changing the velocity and now we can jump using the spacebar button so it's working we can adjust the jump force from the inspector so I'm gonna change it to 6 and let's hit the spacebar button but we have one problem we can make multiple jumps so it's like the flappy bird game we need to check if we are on the ground then we can jump otherwise we can't do that so we need a way to check if our player is on the ground and to do that we are going to use a predefined function it's called overlap circle basically it's going to create a circle under the feet of the player and if it's touching something like the ground it's gonna return true otherwise it's gonna return false so we are going to use it to check if our player is on the ground or not and to do that first of all we need to create an empty game object under the player using right click create empty and let's call it the ground check then I'm gonna change its position under the feet of the player so let's select the move tool and move it down here so this is going to be the center of the circle then let's open up the player movement script and let's create a boolean is grounded to check if the player is on the ground or not I'm gonna call it is grounded also we need to add a reference to the ground check empty game object so that we can set the center of the circle using public transform we just need the transform and let's call it a ground check as well we are going to assign it from the inspector then we can go down here and let's initialize the boolean is grounded so each time we are going to check if the player is on the ground and we use the predefined function physics 2d dot overlap circle so this is the predefined function we need to give it the center of the circle which is gonna be the ground check uh, position using ground check dot position and then we need to specify the radius for example 0.1 but we have one problem our function is going to return true all the time that's because the circle is actually touching the player even if he's uh, flying or uh, jumping so to fix that we need to pass in the third parameter which is a layer mask for example we can go up here and let's create public the type is layer mask and let's call it a ground layer we are going to set this ground layer from the inspector later on so we need to pass it as a third parameter now this function is going to return true only when it's touching an object that has the ground layer let's add the semicolon so to check that our function is working let's make a debug.log and we are going to log the boolean is grounded let's select our player and under the player movement script we need to reference the ground check variable so let's drag in this variable then we need to specify the ground layer so we are going to assign a ground layer to all of the objects that is supposed as a ground like the grass here and to do that let's select this grass style map and let's add a new layer using add layer I'm gonna call it a ground then we can assign it to all of the tiles by changing the layer from here from default to ground and let's tell the player movement script to only check if we are touching an object that has the ground layer make sure to select it from here so the physics dot overlap circle is going to create an invisible circle with a radius 0.1 and if it's touching an object that has the ground layer it's going to return true otherwise it's going to return false so let's test this so as you can see under the console we have the boolean true that's because the player is on the ground and if we jump as you can see we have the message false that's because the boolean is grounded is false and when we go back on the ground we have the message true so it's working now we are going to use this boolean under the jump function we need to check if we are actually on the ground using if is grounded in that case we can jump by calling this line of code otherwise we can't do that so let's go ahead and save the script and go back into unity 
And now the problem is fixed. I can only make one jump using the spacebar button. But let's go ahead and add the double jump feature. So to implement that, it's very simple. We just need to create another variable and it's gonna be the number of jumps. So let's go up here and let's declare an int and it's gonna be the number of jumps. So let's initialize it to zero by default. And then when we call the jump function, we are going to check if we are on the ground. In that case, we are going to change the y velocity, but also we need to increase the number of jumps. So let's add number of jumps, plus plus, and if the player is not on the ground, so let's add an else over here. In such case, we can check if the number of jumps equals one, then we can make the second one using if number of jumps equals one. In that case, let's call the same line of code. Also, we need to increase the number of jumps using number of jumps plus plus, but also we need to reset it. So whenever we go back on the ground, using if is grounded, we need to reset the number of jumps to zero. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's save our script. And now I'm able to move left and right. I can make one jump and the double jump as well. So it's very easy to implement the double jump feature. Now let's go ahead and add the jump animation. For now, whenever we are jumping, the player is playing the idle or the run animation. We can use the animator controller component to adjust that. So first of all, we need to create an animation and add it to the animator. And to do that, we can go to this character folder. We have the jump animation. So let's select the image. I'm using this size. Then let's change the sprite mode to multiple and hit apply. Then let's open up the sprite editor to slice the image. It contains two sprites. Let's hit the slice button. So you could use any assets you want. Then let's hit apply. I'm gonna drag in the images under the hierarchy to create the animation. I'm gonna put it under the animations folder and let's call it a jump. Then let's hit save and that's going to create an object under the scene. I'm gonna get rid of it. Also, it's going to create another controller and it's this one. We need to get rid of it as well. We just need the jump animation. So let's select our player and drag in the jump animation. So in order to switch between the animations, we need to add transitions. Basically, we can jump when the player is idle or running. That's why we can make transition from run to jump and from idle to jump. Then to control these transitions, we need to add a parameter. So it's very easy. Under the parameters tab, I'm going to add a boolean and let's call it is grounded. Then let's select the transition. Make sure to remove has exit time so that we can switch immediately to the animation. And under the conditions, we are going to use the condition is grounded is false. So whenever the player is not on the ground, we can play the jump animation. The same thing over here. Make sure to remove has exit time and add the condition is grounded false. And if we go back to the ground, we can switch back to the idle animation. So let's select this transition and I'm gonna use the condition is grounded true this time and make sure to remove has exit time as well. So if you are working on a 2D game, it's recommended to change this to zero. The same thing for all of these transitions. I'm gonna change the transition duration to zero. Now we are going to change this boolean is grounded from the script and it's going to update the animations accordingly. Let's go back to the player movement script and it's very simple. Under here, let's use animator dot set boolean. The first parameter is the name of the boolean, which is is grounded. And then we need to set it to the boolean is grounded. And it's this variable. Now our player will switch between the animations depending on his state if he's on the ground or not, whether he's moving or not as well. Let's save our script and let's hit the play. And there you go. Now we can move left and right. We can make a simple jump or a double jump as well. So it's working. But as you can see, the jump animation is a little bit weird. So he looks like he's dancing. So to fix that, we need to change the jump animation. As you can see, it is set to loop time. Make sure to uncheck that. 
we need to play the jump animation once when the player is not on the ground and let's hit play again and there you go we've created a simple 2d movement in unity so i'm able to move left and right we can make a jump and we can make a double jump as well yay so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit that bell icon i appreciate that and i will see you in the next one